so yeah, let me let me kick things off. Uh, we're gonna have a pretty kind of light uh, presentation. I think we're anticipating quite a lot of questions from everyone. So I have my team uh, here with me today as well. Uh, Mel, Fiona, Ming, um, and um, you know, you can just drop questions into the Q&A and I'll be happy to kind of answer it um, as we go as well. And if there are still any questions, you know, remaining at the end, happy to take them on uh, as well. So keep your questions coming. Uh, don't be shy. Uh, there's no kind of stupid questions. I always maintain that, right? So yeah, very happy today to be here sharing uh, with Exabytes on, you know, why TikTok is built for businesses. Uh, so I'll be covering that. We'll be covering some case studies as well. And in closing, we'll kind of mention some ways that you might want to get in touch with us if you do uh, to either scale up your TikTok presence or to get started, you know, with the products that uh, we've talked about uh, today as well. So again, feel free to keep popping your questions over. Uh, today's session deck as well will also be uh, made available for download. So if you want to get your hands on that, feel free to contact us via our email uh, in the contact us uh, portion today as well. So without further ado, um, let's jump into why TikTok is built for businesses. Again, just to introduce myself, I'm the country lead for Singapore, Malaysia and Philippines. We've just added Cambodia into the mix as well. So, you know, it's a fast growing kind of a rocket ship. Uh, I think if you've seen the news recently, we've just crossed like a billion monthly active users, right? So TikTok is definitely a ship that is sailing fast and you don't want to kind of miss that. Okay, so it's the leading destination today, right? Obviously for short form mobile video and you know, TikTok's mission, cre inspiring creativity and bringing joy, right? Has always been like a key to TikTok being the leading destination for short form videos. You know, more than ever, consumers are craving authenticity, connection and creativity. So this is the core mission of our platform and that's what makes us so special. You know, as audiences move away from like content that feels unauthentic, they're looking for real and positive experiences. And TikTok is the home for that, giving everyday people like you and me the ability to make content and show up as themselves. If you've been on TikTok yourself as a consumer, you know exactly what I mean. It's it's very natural. It's not made up. You know, um, I think it's 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 what makes it fun, right? How real it is. And you know, the best part, our community welcomes businesses like yourself as well and would love to co-create with you. You know, we are a unique platform that welcomes real people to express themselves. And it's also a place where communities and businesses can create videos to share their journey, right? So, you know, it's it's not just about sending one-way messages to the, to the community, right? With TikTok, the community creates with you. And, and that's, I think, the beauty of it. And that's how you really get the kind of traction and virality that you see, you know, some businesses get uh, on the platform as well. Now, just to dive a little deeper, right, and to share how it's like for a TikTok user, um, there's a few elements, you know, first is the For You feed, which is a customized, unique experience for our users. I'll share more on that shortly. Uh, secondly, we have a discovery page where TikTok users can explore different content. And then thirdly, it's a very easy to use interface. And there are many creative ways of creating kind of content on, on the platform, right? And lastly, obviously, you have a user profile where you can share your own TikTok videos and creations as well. So what's this for you feed? I think it's kind of like the secret sauce that's really driving the explosive growth of TikTok, right? This is what kind of enables the connection and discovery. You know, it's central to the TikTok experience and where most of our users spend their time. Now, this is powered by a recommendation system, you know, that delivers content to each and every user based on their users' interests. So there's no two for you feeds that are exactly the same. If you, you know, have your TikTok open and you have your friends open at the same time, right? You'd see that the for you feeds are extremely different and they will adapt to you as your tastes and kind of preferences change over time as well. You know, um, this diversifies recommendations as well. You know, it keeps the feed varied and interesting and diversity is essential to maintain a thriving global community, right? You might stumble upon kind of new content categories. You may discover new creators and you might experience new perspectives and ideas as you scroll through your feed. I know for, for instance, uh, I, I have. And just to switch gears a little, right, towards how TikTok can really help your business. You know, as a business, it's important to know how you can further connect with our community of TikTok users, right? We know that businesses have different priorities and it's important to stay ahead of the game. It is a lot, I think, nowadays for a business, especially an SMB business, right, to figure out how to kind of ensure your brand, you know, gets the awareness to driving your customers to purchase, right? Whether it's getting your brand discovered, 
differentiating your digital store or influencing likely you know interested shoppers and driving customers to convert these are all key objectives that i think is extremely challenging for businesses to think about nowadays so let's break it down you know why is tiktok kind of ideal for your business you're connecting and building relevance with your target audience you're reaching a wide and engaged audience as well and obviously you're helping to influence the purchase decision most importantly so you know when customers can buy similar products from other merchants you need to connect and build relevance with them right when there are multiple brands that have similar products and kind of consumers have unlimited choices it's very very important to do this you know and we did a kind of research with global web index uh, in 2020 and based on this research right the community on tiktok are much more leaned into brands they have a real connection with so again that authenticity portion is really important don't don't be too made up you know don't be about kind of like only showing the good sides of uh the, the business be real more than anything right nine in ten tiktok users are actually purchase decision makers while well, one in three tends to buy brands that are advertised. Now, this is a very, very powerful value set. You know, it's a powerhouse of spenders that will show brand love as well. And on top of that, one third also actually recommend on social media when buying a brand. So, you know, brands can really leverage scale relevance on, on TikTok, right? This is an opportunity for brands and businesses to leverage TikTok to build relevancy. Again, you can see from this Nielsen study as well, that users feel that the content and advertising on TikTok is relevant to them. So, you know, 75% feel that the content on TikTok is unique. 80% actually discover new content they enjoy while, while using the app, probably due to the For You feed, right? And 43% of users feel that the advertising on TikTok blends in with the content. So this shows you how organic most of the advertisements on TikTok feel. And that's a key consideration as you're planning your creatives as well. Now, 50% of all TikTokers discover new products and brands while they're on the app. So let that sink in for a bit. You know, you have almost half of these or rather half of these users coming on the platform they're not intending to purchase they're not thinking of your product or service and they discover it while they're on the platform as well so it's a great great kind of platform for discovery right and reaching kind of like a wide and engaged audience on TikTok you know I want to go into kind of how diverse uh, our audiences are and just to show you some examples right from you know artists teachers talents, you know, we have, you know, different kind of TikToks uh, on culture, spiritual healing, and even cooking as well. And I just want to show you some examples of uh, uh, what you might see on the platform. Can you read this? Hi, Things Asia Fathers say, Lim Pei Lai your idea, go and study, clean your room, come home now. Rất là hay, im lặng hoài luôn Cho người ta tự hiểu Đó là chia tay Khi yêu, mình nói được Hết yêu, có đói Thì cũng phải nói lời chia tay Okay, that last one always makes me a bit hungry. I hope it did that to you as well. Um, we would like to know, you know, share in the kind of chat box, you know, what is your favorite TikTok channel and, and why? You know, uh, why we want to do this is, you know, it's interesting that you always think that, you know, TikTok is just full of, you know, people dancing and, and doing these like trendy things, but there's a lot more to it, right? People are actually finding like financial life hacks, you know, um, other kind of useful educational bits of information. And there's a lot of other kind of, I think, um, um, reasons why people are using TikTok, you know. And as, as people start to share this, right, you start to see, you know, wow, there's actually a lot of variance in kind of uh, the way people use TikTok as well. So yeah, feel free to drop in the chat box. Uh, what are some of your channels that you really enjoy on the platform and, and why? We like to kind of know as well. Okay. Next, I'm going to jump into some important stats, and I think um, this is key um, for, you know, any small business or even business uh, per se looking to kind of expand their presence on TikTok, right? So we've seen explosive growth, right, across Southeast Asia, but in Philippines, Malaysia, and Singapore, 
you can see the increase in daily time in app per user to the increase in average sessions per users as well. Right in Malaysia, for instance, we're seeing a 225% increase in daily time in app per user uh, from Jan 2020 to Jan 2021, year on year, right? We're also in seeing an increase in average sessions per user as well of about 32%. In Singapore, that's even more dramatic at about 230% and 132% as well. This was a global web uh, index study again done at the beginning of this year. And, you know, this obviously has been a big part of driving that monthly active user uh, piece, you know, coming into TikTok as well. And yeah, just looking at the chat box right now, um, cooking, travel and education. There we go. You know, thank you, uh, Sylvina, for kind of sharing that. You know, a lot of kind of different kind of channels and reasons, again, why people are using TikTok. And I think that's really the key driver behind, you know, this increased engagement and continually growing kind of adoption we see among users as well. They're also spending more time on TikTok as well, right? You talk about the average duration time per session spent, you know, that's about four minutes and 58 seconds for Singapore, five minutes and 50 seconds for Malaysia as well. It's even higher in the Philippines. So, you know, they're spending time on TikTok and they're spending plenty of it. Remember, this is per session and the amount of sessions are also increasing, you know, as time passes as well. So we're definitely on a rocket ship kind of growth trajectory over here. And, you know, this is, again, uh, something you want to be part of as a business as well. Now, TikTok can also help influence purchase decisions, right? Our platform has the power to help influence your potential customer. You know, and how do we do this? It's content and relevance. You know, you empower the new, empowering rather is the new shopping kind of behavior, right? With the right relevant and Right, right and relevant context, it can help customers' decision-making journey faster with these three key pillars, right? There's the TikTok for you feed, you know, the emerging kind of audience behavior as well, and add products that are highly engaging. This leads to a faster decision journey and an accelerated funnel led by video. You know, short form video is the best medium to influence shopper trust and behavior, right? Video is the best place for you to do that storytelling and research backs this as well. Um, there are statistics about how short form video can influence trust and behavior that shoppers have with you. And one of the most impactful numbers to me, right, is that 84% of people have been convinced to buy a product or service by just watching the brand's video. You know, video is that powerful storytelling tool that you can use to get customers interested. 96% watch an explainer video to learn more about a product or service. 69% prefer to watch a short video to learn about a product or service versus other mediums. And they're two times more likely to share the video over other content types. You know, uh, before I go on, I just wanted to say why this is important is sometimes, you know, businesses look at video formats, right? And you think, wow, that's a lot of work I got to do. I get to conceptualize it. Shooting it is going to be, you know, more work than maybe getting a static image done. But it's going to pay you dividends, right? There's a reason why businesses are investing more and more in video nowadays. And it's because of all this consumer behavior. You know, the simply put like static ads aren't going to stand out as much they're not going to drive the kind of engagement as much and in an ever kind of increasing competitive landscape right this is what you need to do to kind of stay ahead but the great thing about TikTok is it doesn't have to be difficult you know we have so many ai driven tools to help you build kind of a creatives even if you don't have video assets of your own even if you only have static images um, you don't have any music we've got tons of licensed music that you can use uh, you know, and it's all on platform. It's super easy to use as well. So we'll share more about that in one of our case studies later. We also have this hashtag, right, that is highlighting uh, engaging and community sharing about how TikTok has influenced them to, you know, purchase some of the things that they see on TikTok. So if you look at the hashtag TikTok make me buy it, right, this was October 2020. I believe we've crossed like the 1 billion mark like some time ago, you know, uh, and this is huge to testament rather to, you know, how TikTok can really drive purchasing and uh, to a certain point, even clear the shelves of certain merchants that, you know, have uh, been on TikTok as well. You know, TikTok is also ranked number one for ad equity. Consumers see kind of TikTok ads as more relevant, fun and innovative as well. Okay, so let's talk about the TikTok for a uh, business kind of uh, solution as well, right? So what does it entail? I mean, beyond creating an organic account on TikTok, right? What can you do? So three pillars, again, that, you know, brands can leverage to stand out on TikTok. The first thing is your business account where you can kind of post organic content, you know, just to get started, have a feel around how to do your creatives, you know, and get a feel of, you know, what works with your audience. 
you know, the second thing obviously is our full funnel ad solutions or paid ads. And the third thing you can consider is also co-creating with uh, creators as well, right? So we have what we call the TikTok creator marketplace, and you can actually engage kind of TikTok vetted creators uh, to kind of, you know, uh, endorse your products, drive engagement with your products as well. Okay, so let's talk about the TikTok kind of business account first. It's a great way for you to engage with your audience, right? You can add your business information for TikTok users to find out more. And you can also have insights on how your content performs, you know, with real time metrics on content performance and insights into your followers as well. Now, onto the ad solution. Our TikTok in feed ads has all the benefits of an ad solution, but it seamlessly blends in for the consumer experience. So most of the time, right, consumers don't even know they're watching an ad unless they really notice that very small sponsored word uh, on the ad. We also have very flexible budget options for you to kickstart. So a lot of clients, especially SMBs, they always ask us, hey, what, what's the, you know, what's your rate card? We, we, we don't really have one. It's an auction bidding kind of system. So you can literally bid, you know, whatever you want. Of course, we do have recommendations on, you know, what kind of a minimum budget typically works. Something along the lines of typically four to 500 USD per month is recommended. But if let's say budget is tighter at the moment, you know, you can consider just starting with, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, right, to start. And lastly, we have a suite of tools to help you optimize your campaign smartly as well. So, you know, it's, it's a full kind of uh, ad solution that, you know, is at the first time easy to use but also organic and kind of natural uh, with the audiences that you kind of work with as well. So let's break down why kind of TikTok ads is ideal, right? It has a full funnel solution, right? You can move your customer down the funnel and optimize for your business objective. You know, whether it's awareness all the way down to conversion, we take care of everything. The robust targeting, we have a very wide range of targeting parameters. So you have 12 plus target targeting parameters and the ability to retarget your existing brand audience as well. And audience management, right, allows you to leverage your existing database and audience activity to create custom and lookalike audiences. If you've used other platforms and use this kind of tools on other platforms, you know what it, it's about, right? It's about segmenting your audience, uh, maybe excluding people you have who have already bought your product or have already seen your ad and finding lookalikes to people who have bought your product as well. And lastly, of course, you have measurement as well, which is really important, right? Um, you can measure ads effectiveness through third-party measurement partners or even through TikTok pixel integrations as well. Now, I want to talk about some case studies. Uh, and the first one we have is actually Taylor's College in Malaysia. So what they did, right, was they actually wanted to drive conversions and nurture leads. And they actually ran in-feed ads and used TikTok's smart video tool to easily convert their existing still images to a vertical video. So remember I said, even if you don't have a video creative, right, um, you can actually still create TikTok videos. And this is a great example, right? TikTok smart video tool makes it super easy to do that. You know, with a simple creative, actually TikTok, uh, rather Taylor's College was able to launch cost-effective creative that drove high conversion rates to the website and interest form. So they had a two second uh, average video watch time, a 16.7% conversion rate, which if you've done, you know, marketing campaigns before online, right? You know that this is a really high conversion rate. And they had 21% rate of video views over 25%. So let's have a quick look to you know how that kind of final creative look look like. And really, that was it. <laughs> you know, with a simple creative like that, you know, zooming in on I think the in, important points to their kind of target audience, they actually drove a really really good uh, success rate as well, right? A conversion rate rather. So next, uh, I'd like to talk about our second case study, which was in Indonesia, and this was with a kind of merchant called Acom. Now, if you've never heard of Acom, right, uh, you'll be forgiven because, you know, they are actually an SMB brand. But what was beautiful about this campaign was on the mega sale date of 12-12 last year, they actually became the top five sellers in the audio category on an e-commerce marketplace uh, uh, and we're talking like one of the biggest e-commerce marketplaces in Indonesia, right? So. Um, for an SMB brand to be right up there with the big boys and the big brands, right, competing and just driving the kind of same volume of sales as a top five seller is just amazing. And what did they do? They used TikTok's in-feed ads, right, and they leveraged custom audience targeting, targeting as well to optimize their ads towards audiences that had engaged with them previously. So they were trying to drive purchase, right, from audiences that were already kind of interested and had already engaged with their ads. And to stand out during 12-12 as well, 
they increase their daily bid cap by 30 to 50 percent. Now, what you see during this mega sale period, you know, now as we enter into, we've just done 9 9, we're going to have 10 10, 11 11, and 12 12 soon, right? If you're looking to leverage and ride on this wave of mega sales, you have to know that most advertisers and merchants across all platforms are going to be increasing their bids. So you might ask, wow, won't this, you know, lead to an increase in CPA or cost per acquisition for myself, right? It might, but uh, by competing, Consumers during these mega sale days also have a tendency to spend higher average order values as well. And so what that means, right, is you might end up with a total ROI that is same or even better than what you've been getting on non mega sale days, even though you're bidding higher. And this explains why Acom actually increased their daily bid cap on 30 to 50% so that their ads could still be displayed to consumers. And then by doing so, consumers, you know, during these mega sale days are more likely to spend actually ended up spending more you know, uh, on their on their shop as well. So this ad campaign actually drove, you know, high traffic to Acom's Marketplace store. And they ended up again as one of the top five brands for the audio category in the marketplace during 1212. This really, really speaks to me, you know, leading the SMB team, you know, when an SMB kind of business is able to compete with big brands like that, it's really an amazing story. And let's, let's just run through and sh I'll show you quickly, you know, what the creative that they use kind of look like. Guys, jadi kemarin tangan aku kram kayak nggak bisa gerak gitu. Mungkin karena pegel banget ketik di iPad. Kalau ketik di laptop malah punggung aku yang sakit. Punggung juga tambah bungkuk. Terus karena keracunan TikTok, jadi aku pesan ini. Ini keyboard tanpa kabel dan bikin kaget banget. Ini enak banget buat dipencet. Dan karena ini tanpa kabel, jadi meskipun kalian tiduran tetap bisa ketik, guys. Badan jadi nggak sakit lagi. Kalian aku pesan mouse tanpa kabel juga. Tinggal dimasukin aja kayak gini. Terus udah deh, udah bisa gerak. Gerakannya juga smooth dan enak dipencet. Bahkan ini meskipun jaraknya jauh tetap bisa dipakai, guys. Solusi buat kaum mageran dan yang badannya suka sakit kayak aku deh. Sebelum main nanya, beli di sini. So you can see just from this creative, right? It pays to be natural, to be authentic, right? This is literally like a review, a, a, an ad hoc or like a casual review done by someone sitting at home. It's not too made up. There's not too much kind of staging that's going on. And it just feels like very natural and authentic. And that's the way you should kind of plan your TikTok creatives and videos as well. So let's submit, you know, um, why why grow with TikTok today? You know, TikTok is where businesses can reach, engage, and connect with relevant customers, right? TikTok has a wide and highly engaged audience as well. And finally, you know, TikTok can influence shopper behavior, and we're here to help your brand influence these purchase decisions as well. Okay, so if you have questions, uh, feel free to kind of reach us uh, at my.smb, my.smb at tiktok.com. And you can also visit our help center at, you know, support.tiktok.com slash en for English. Uh, we also have webinars. I'm just going to leave the slide here for a moment uh, because you might want to copy down the bit.ly links. Um, for our Singapore audiences, uh, we have that webinar over there. And then for Indonesia and Malaysia audiences, uh, that's the webinar link as well. So feel free to sign up for our webinars if you'd like to know more, if you'd like to have an interactive session to, you know, have your questions answered um, as well. So I'm just going to have a quick pop into the Q&A box. Does TikTok work well with B2B industries? Okay. So I would say, you know, it, it generally works well across, you know, all matter of kind of, a, um, kind of a industries, whether it's B2C or B2B. Um, the, the thing is you have to kind of probably put thought into the creative as well, you know, and I think that's going to be the challenge. Will TikTok allow you to have that kind of, you know, authentic, even a bit of an angle of comedy, right, around uh, the angle that you want to drive with the creative? And if the answer is yes, likely is that you will get some traction on the platform as well. So I think the challenge lies more in the creative than really the business model. You know, we've seen all matter of businesses actually advertise on TikTok, and I don't think there's really a limiting factor per se. Um, people might think that, you know, very young audiences are on TikTok, but that's not true. Our biggest segment of audience, right, actually lies between 18 to 40 years old uh, in terms of age. So when you think about B2B uh, business decision makers, right, more and more, I think they fall within that, that kind of age range. You know, as you see more businesses setting up and developing as well, uh, these are the folks that you typically might want to kind of reach out to or even cultivate as an audience uh, as well. So yeah, I saw some other questions pop out and uh, I think they were pretty quickly answered. Thanks, Ming, uh, for that as well. 
Um, um, we can yeah. actually just go back to that and answer those because I think it's a interesting question. Um, I think to mm-hmm. whoever's uh, in the team right now at TikTok, you can actually uh, pass the session over to me. I'll handle it from here because um, we're actually finishing ahead of time. So we have plenty <laughs> of time to answer your questions right now. Let's sure. take this one from Cynthia that was earlier. Um, Cynthia's question was, is TikTok mm-hmm. good to advise property on? Yeah, um, I, I would say you'd see just like on other social media platforms, right? A lot of, I think, property ads are moving into kind of video nowadays. And and why is this? I mean, you're selling something that could be a, a lifetime decision. You're selling a very, very key decision, you know, for, for a lot of consumers out there, right? And so what better way than to engage a platform that is extremely visual, right? With TikTok, I think the challenge here is you have to be more hard hitting. You have to be, you know, driving to... I think the key differentiator or the unique selling point about the property, right? And whether it's location, whether it's features, whether it's price, you know, it has to show really quickly, I think, within that creative as well. So definitely possible, whether you're a developer, whether you're an agent, we see actually a lot of uh, uptake. Um, and we've actually done a few workshops with uh, some of these major uh, property uh, kind of agencies uh, so far, because a lot of their agents are really interested to uh, jump on TikTok. I like to also share a, a testimonial. Um, uh, there was actually an agent that ran some ads on our platform and got quite a lot of leads, right? And it, it was actually very interesting because it wasn't one of those very made up and touched up videos that you see a lot of other agents doing of you know the actual property itself. It was actually just a selfie video of the person in his car. He was literally wearing a singlet and he was holding like a present, I think from one of his uh, uh, clients that you know he had received as gratitude for you know servicing them well you know and just you know saying a message of gratitude to his client and talking about how he'd always do his best he got a lot of leads from running an ad like that so it again goes back to that angle right about how authenticity really stands out on this platform versus you know something that is super super made up and super super touched up yeah Correct, because I think people gravitate to whatever is relatable. And like for the most exactly. part, a lot of us, you know, in our most comfortable um, scenarios, we're not all made up. We're not, you know, you know wearing perfect clothes. We, you know, we, yeah. we gravitate to things which are imperfect, like you mentioned. So I think that was absolutely wonderful. Um, to all of you who's watching right now, if you have any questions regarding TikTok, anything under the sun that you'd like to know, please leave them in the Q&A. But right now, we're going to take this one in the chat. We seem to have missed this one out. This one is from Lewis. So the question is, will the effect of starting my own lower budget, uh, sorry, will the effect of starting on my own with lower budget be uh, negligible? So, um, and is that not worth doing at all unless I start with a recommended budget? I again, I, I I wouldn't say so you, because you see TikTok is not at this stage where you know beyond the kind of traction you get on ad spend, right? Um, probably what other social media networks were at a couple of years ago, where if you run something organic as well with just a bit of spend, there is the opportunity for it to in a way go viral as well, and really that's down to the content as well. You know nowadays the feedback that we get from a lot of clients on why they're trying TikTok out, right, is that you know, even with ad spend on other platforms, they're like not getting the traction that they used to. And without any ad spend, right, they're, they're hardly getting anything at all. And then the investment and the time spent in, you know, creating that video, then kind of, in a way, goes out the window, right? Because they're, they're, they're feeling that no one's really kind of looking into it. So if you've actually created your own TikTok account before and you've created videos absolutely without ad spend at all, you would see that, wow, it's also getting views. Some of your videos, you know, if they're really interesting and like, you know, punchy and all that, they might even get like viral, right? And and there's a chance for people to get viral even without ad spend as well. So I would say, in a way, no budget is too small. Now we have recommended ad budgets because in this scenario where let's say, you know, the creative isn't as kind of go as viral as it, it, it does, people still typically have, let's say, a minimum audience or reach that they want to kind of engage, right? And that's why we usually kind of have a recommended budget. Um, so beyond that, I would say, you know, especially for SMBs, in a way, nothing's really too small. But of course, we advise you to kind of go with our recommendation. Typically, at this point, around maybe four to 500 USD a month is typically recommended. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, three questions just came in. Very, very fun. Let's do this one from Paley. So Paley's question is, do I need to have a good following on my TikTok account to attract more audience on my ads? Really good yeah. question here. 
I, I love this question because, you know, uh, businesses tend to always have this kind of fascination with vanity metrics, like whether it's followers or like likes, whatever, right? They feel that, oh, I need to get to a certain base before I can get that traction. And that's the beauty again of TikTok because of the for you feed, right? And because of the how it works with its algorithm, right? You don't actually need that. You know, it definitely helps because, you know, having followers means that in a way, like you have subscribers, right? You have people that will kind of, you know, be tuned into any new content that you're rolling out. But even if you don't, this is why businesses, you know, like I mentioned Acom earlier, it's a brand that maybe a lot of us haven't never even heard of. But for them to become a top five, right, on, on the mega sale day was driven by just the fact of how effective their creative was and also the optimization was as well. So, no, the answer is um, you don't necessarily need to. It helps. But I think more than any other platform, TikTok's algorithm actually helps to drive, in a way, non-followers to your kind of a account and channel as well. Hope that answers. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. this next one is from Winx. Now the question is, mm. would you have the bucket size of the highest purchase? As mm. in how much people will spend for a product they see in mm. TikTok? So for example, 500 ringgit or 1000 ringgit? Yeah, I mean, if we go to this, right, then we can talk about like property, vehicles, you know, car sales and all that. There's really in a way no upper limit, right? There are even kind of like what we call lux lifestyle kind of advertisements that go on on TikTok. And luxury brands are also adopting TikTok because what you see nowadays is it's no longer like the older audiences or the really old audiences that spend the most. In fact, you know, you know, prior to kind of having kids when people are in their, maybe their late 20s coming into their 30s as well, that's a very YOLO kind of phase for a lot of people, right? Where they just spend you know, and kind of like um, financial planning maybe takes a bit of a backseat until later on. And that's why I think a lot of like, I think higher end brands are also considering TikTok for, for purchase. I would say in terms of purchase value on mega sale day, it tends to go up, but that's the, also the reason why kind of CPA or rather the cost per kind of uh, impression or click does go up on these days as well, because advertisers are competing more fiercely during these days. But um, I, I would say in a way, there is not really a, a, a defined kind of bucket size. We also see kind of advertisers running, you know, uh, very kind of lower price items, uh, also driving a lot of kind of volume on TikTok. Again, it goes back down uh, to the creative and how it's kind of being marketed. I would also say TikTok is an opportunity, right, uh, where you have a chance not just to compete on price, because if you just simply list on a marketplace, right, a lot of the time you may you might be pressured to like, oh, my competitor is listing the same product at you know a cheaper price. I have to, you know, lower lower it to beat them. But on TikTok, you have the chance to then kind of you know leverage creativity to drive that sale instead. You know, and also I think it, since you're asking about like uh, ticket sizes or, or rather bucket size, right? Uh, you might be thinking of maybe marketing a higher price product. What I've seen that's effective typically, right, is leveraging creators you know, or, or rather like some people like to call them influencers, right? So we have what we call the creator marketplace as well, where you can, you know, have, get linked up with um, kind of a creator uh, uh, and have them kind of endorse and drive your product sales through their own channels and followers as well. And in fact, uh, in, in line with kind of the mega sales season, we're actually running a program right now where we kind of uh, uh, sponsor the production, the video production, and even the influencer with a minimum kind of an ad spend as well uh, for TikTok. So if you'd like to find out more about that, feel free to get in touch as well. Yeah. All right. Very nice. So um, I actually scrolled down right to the bottom. This one is from Estelle. Yeah. This is actually pretty interesting. So can you give us three TikTok marketing tips, Philip? Thanks. <laughs> and uh, one on the licensing music, please. Uh, on the licensing music, uh, I'd like to know like what the question is. Um, if you'd like to know what it, is in, in in a sense is it we have a huge library of, of licensed music i think the the challenge behind a lot of people creating these creatives especially videos right is 
they typically have to use maybe like some free music they find online, which is sometimes a bit stale, you know, doesn't have the effect that they want, but because they don't want to pay for royalties and all that, right, they end up having to use that music, which kind of dilutes the experience and the effort, right, that they've put into the video creative. So on TikTok, we have a ton of licensed music that you can use. If you kind of listen to, uh, you know, uh, any of these TikTok ads before, right, you, you'd see that the music widely varies, right? Um, and a lot of it really draws and drives your attention. So if you talk about three TikTok marketing tips, right, I would say, look, look back at the three pillars that I talked about earlier. You know, I think one is, again, I, I sound like a broken record saying this, right, but authenticity, again, super important. The second thing I would say, you know, comedy generally kind of works well. Um, and, and, you know, you, you don't want to try too hard at doing that, but you want to, you know, find something that probably works with your, your target segment as well. And you, you need to really think hard about, you know, what your target segment is. What is the typical profile of people that will buy your product, right? Something whimsical that is lower price might have a kind of lower average age, something a little bit higher price. You might be looking at your late twenties, you know, into your early thirties and even forties, et cetera. Right? So what kind of humor then works with that kind of you know, whether it's an old millennial or like a Gen Z or whatever that you're, you're thinking about, right? And again, on that, on that note, TikTok, again, is not just Gen Zs that you're marketing to, marketing to remember, right? There are different audiences and you can set this as you run the campaign as well. Um, if you talk about the last kind of tip, then I would say, think about, I think, the, the video length as well. Some advertisers, right, they are sometimes very carried away with you know, putting as many specs in about the product as possible. You know, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G and kind of stuff. And it kind of overloads the audience. I would say less is always more on a platform like TikTok because on video, you don't want people's eyes to be shooting and darting all over the, the place, right? You want them to just home in what is the two or three maximum key messages. You know, the rule of three is generally, generally works well on TikTok that you want to drive across to your audience. Keep it at that because anything else that is good to know you can drive to the audience, you know, whether it's in a follow-up kind of experience browsing on your website or in a phone call or however way you're selling to the audience. Don't be in a rush to, you know, overload the audience with information. Rather, let the video and the visuals, you know, sell it for you more than like specs. Yeah, that would be the last tip that I would give. I agree. Very, very good advice. And very nice. Um, Estelle, I hope that answers your question. Now, this one comes from David. David's question is, does TikTok work with a hotel business? Mm. Yeah, um, we're getting a lot of these questions nowadays because, uh, you know, domestic kind of travel in light of COVID and all is definitely something that um, uh, is being looked into and the way that the hospitality industry, I think, is try trying to pivot and all that as well. At the same time, right, you see that a lot of consumers are trying to spend money and that's why, you know, all their holiday budgets are being shifted into like kind of whimsical purchases, purchases off the cuff, staycations, you know, and, and, and I'm going on one tomorrow over the weekend as well. I'm, I'm testament to this as well, right? So, so I, I would say that, you know, um, it definitely works. You have to pivot. I think you have to package it and position it in such a way. Why would it appeal to someone looking at, let's say, a staycation if you're targeting domestic, for instance, right, versus someone, you know, coming in on an international trip for a longer kind of stay, etc. Um, what kind of packaging would you think about, you know, when you think of staycations, right? It might be, a, I don't know, a bundled dining experience. It might be a bundled kind of a massage experience, etc. that is within the hotel. And you want to kind of drive that cross and upsell, you know, within the kind of uh, offerings that you have as well. So yes, I would definitely say uh, it works well with hotels as well. Again, you know, without the visuals, right, hotels tend to be a very price-driven kind of business, right? If you list on, you know, travel aggregators, people sort by price and then maybe they look at ratings and sometimes that there's question mark about, you know, how real are some of these ratings as well and all that, right? So with the videos, right, people I think can get a real sense and a view of like, oh, what their actual stay will feel like and that will drive trust in the consumer for them to just book in advance. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just to add on to this, you know how you mentioned earlier about authenticity and knowing yeah. your niche. So when yeah. it comes to hotels, does comedy fit in? Definitely. I mean, um, <laughs> you know, uh, we see kind of, uh, let's say certain hotels, let's say with uh, unique kind of setups, right? Um, and you see a lot of these TikTok videos organically being created, actually. I'll, I'll share a funny kind of a, a not really funny story or interesting uh, snippet, right? Where 
in Singapore, because we have the stay home notice and, you know, people are actually getting kind of uh, put into hotels whenever, you know, they are, let's say one of their friends gets infected with COVID or something. And you have these young people, right, doing like really happy videos that they're getting <laughs> sent to these hotels because they're getting like a five-star hotel stay, etc. And they're doing mini reviews of these hotels as well. So I, I, I would say there's a bit of comedic angle to, to that, right? They're seeing the light side of things. And the fact that it's getting like so many likes, shares, and just views, right? I think it's testament that comedy will work, you know? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because indirectly also, like, you know, they're while they're videoing and showing us their stay there, they're also doing promotion and advertising for the hotel indirectly. So, exactly. Uh, in these videos, right, a lot of the time they actually highlight and stress like unique features that the hotel has that they don't see in other hotels. Like, oh, wow, they have a cool, <laughs> let's say, mini bar or like the shower is a little bit different, blah, 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 right? And that actually then leads to like people considering that hotel for like a staycation, actually. Yeah. After it's been used for, you know, COVID. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and after it's been sanitized. Okay, so yeah. this one from uh, Manji is a pretty good question. So yeah. the question is, I purchased a product from a TikTok seller earlier, but I wasn't too happy because I got rashes from the product. Sorry about mm. that. And I reached oh, out sorry. to the seller and was unable to get a good response. Mm -hmm. My question is, how does TikTok filter all these sellers? And can mm. anyone be the seller on TikTok? What do you guys uh, require specifically when it comes to like a halal cert or a lab test? Let us know. Yeah. So um, I would say, firstly, to our address is two ways. First thing is typically on TikTok, we drive towards like an e-commerce platform. You know, it could be like, let's say an Exabyte website. It could be a marketplace kind of shop listing, etc. right? And so with these cases, usually, let's say if it, if it drove you to, let's say a marketplace, right? Uh, hopefully you can still get a kind of a customer service kind of support at least from the marketplace. If it drove you to a website uh, on an e-commerce platform, then obviously uh, the kind of point of contact or support would be the seller itself. Now to what TikTok is doing, right? I would say, yes, we are actually actively kind of monitoring and in a way patrolling uh, products that are being sold on, on, on our platform. And we're actually quite strict on this. So I would say with creams and all that, yeah, there, there is kind of like a different, I think, user experience sometimes with different users. I, I myself have sensitive skin as well, so I can kind of relate and empathize with, I think, what you're going through. But I would say we typically require these sellers to do, to have proper certifications. Um, even when sellers are making like performance promises, you know, like, oh, this is guaranteed to do this to your weight or that to your skin or whatever, right? We actually stop those ads from happening as well because user experience is really important for us on TikTok. And it's a mix of both kind of algorithmic or automated kind of uh, filtering that we're doing and also a human-led kind of moderation team that is actioning all these things. So I wouldn't say it's always 100% perfect, but I would say this, I think we're a lot more strict than other platforms out there. And in fact, sometimes uh, our advertisers complain a little bit to us, like, you know, like, why do you guys have to be so strict? I can run this on other platforms, how come I can't run it here? And I think it's because we're at the stage right now where we're growing so aggressively, right? We really have to take care of the users. If not, that's going to cause like a vicious cycle in terms of, you know, the growth as well. So if you experience, you know, kind of stricter moderation on TikTok, I would say, uh, please excuse us. And we'll definitely always try to advise you on how you can kind of fix it, right? We have a lot of advertisers. Typically, it's always like the angle that they use, whether it's a performance promise or something they add that maybe they need to add a disclaimer or something like that. And we would usually try to advise the client uh, where we get an answer on that. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Philip. So, Manchi, you know, just, just think about it. TikTok is really doing their best because I don't know, Philip, if you ever come across those videos where they actually yeah. um, advertise, there was this like, um, like, a, like a mask, it's a green tea mask where you put it and it supposedly removes your blackheads, but apparently it's just people yeah. smearing chia seeds on their face. I don't know if you've come across one of those, but <laughs> it's so misleading. You know, I've had like several friends buy it thinking that, you know, it would remove the blackheads and that after a while, nothing happens. So very, very misleading. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess only if you have chia seeds as blackheads. Lah. But, but to that point, I, I would say it's this, I think because um, it's again, algorithmic and also a, a mix of kind of human moderation, right? Stuff does get through uh, on occasion. Uh, where possible, you know, and that's where kind of like the community comes in really strongly. You know, we will typically then get a lot of user reports on something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's also where the human moderation then steps in to kind of like moderate that. 
because we have like this immense amount of content being created, right? We're actually staffing up like our human moderation massively as well. Uh, but I think you see this on every platform, just to what degree, right? And I would say, to a certain sense, if you look at a percentage basis, right, I think it happens a lot less on our platform, which is why we have that earlier, I think I showed one stat on like TikTok being kind of trusted and kind of having better kind of ad equity than other platforms. Reason is, I think people tend to experience it less on TikTok. But, you know, that's not a promise that it will always be zero, right? Like, I think there's always going to be stuff and that's where I think even for ourselves, all the people listening today, we really, really are thankful for, you know, our user reports and stuff like that, stuff from the community that helps our efforts as well. Yeah. Yes. And of course, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, TikTok is doing their best, you guys. So, you know, lighten up a little bit. There's so much to go through. There's so much content coming in. It's like a search, you know, and it never ends. Like, you know, you think you've done one thing and then another thing comes. <laughs> so exactly. let's move on to our next question. This one is from Rachel. So Rachel's question is, hi, we have not used TikTok yet for business as we have several ranges of products and over 200 products. How should we archive our files or videos made and post them on TikTok? What are the yeah. filing systems like and suitable names for each video posted online in order to ease our management and maintenance? Please recommend if applicable. Um, so Rachel is basically dabbling in the paper packaging products business. Yeah, interesting, interesting. And I can see why you have different, you know, 200 uh, different products as well. Uh, it's definitely something that you want to think about, like what is your champion product, right? What is the product for you that drives volume? when if you have run let's say campaigns on other platforms before what is typically a product that drives that kind of um traction on the engagement as well you start there but then the differentiator that you want to do is you don't want to port the same creative you use on other platforms over to tiktok and let me let me il illustrate more on this um you see that sometimes tiktok videos get shared on other platforms right and it goes viral still but you don't see the opposite happening, right? Like other platform videos getting shared on TikTok and it also going viral. So this is something interesting about how audiences engage on TikTok, right? Attention spans are typically a little bit shorter. So you don't want to obviously throw all 200 products in there. We're going to have kind of product development and we already have, you know, some form of kind of AI driven video creation tools, right? That will help you to scale I think uh, you creating different products, A-B testing different campaigns, you know, uh, around the, maybe you have multiple champion products, right? So you don't just want to run one as well. And from A-B testing, right, you can then probably get a feel of, okay, I think this works better on TikTok and that works better on TikTok. We're going to kind of divert our budget, you know, more into that as well. And so from doing that, right, uh, and also let's say if you only have static images, because paper, I can understand, you know, it can be a bit challenging sometimes to shoot, you know, video, right? So if you have static images as well, you saw the Taylor's kind of example earlier, it, it talks about straight to, you know, I think the differentiators, differentiators and the unique selling points, right? So you might want to use some of our smart video tools, etc., to create some of your initial creatives and then get learnings from there first. So on TikTok, right, um, when you run a campaign, there's typically what we call a learning phase for the AI, where you have to cross 50 conversions first. And during this learning phase, your CPA, your cost per acquisition, et cetera, isn't going to be super ideal because the, the, the machine is trying to learn as much as possible about what audiences work well with the creatives that you're running. Once you cross 50 conversions, that's where you can really start to optimize and, and, and you know, drive kind of better performance. So my advice, since you have so many products, right, narrow it down, maybe pick five or 10 run the learning phase campaigns, make sure you give enough time to cross that learning phase and then start to really optimize, you know, around like what drives that performance and leverage, you know, smart video tool is one of the tools that we have. We have tons. If you check our help center out, right, there's, you can, you can find out more about all the other video tools that we have as well. Yeah. All right, absolutely super. So this next one is from Karen. Karen's question yeah. is, to attract traffic and brand awareness, is it best to post videos uh, only on TikTok or TikTok, TikTok business ads? Mm, I think it's, and also I think she's got one on how frequently she should post, right? Yes. So yeah, frequency, um, I think this was covered earlier as well. I think it's it's the same. It's, it's generally kind of like not so much of a, concern at this point i wouldn't say go ahead and do 10 posts a day etc right generally the rule of thumb of doing two to three per day generally is good because it's not about how many you do it's about how effective 
each creative is at resonating more importantly. So if you had one that was really, really good at engaging your audience, right? I would rather that than two or three that were maybe a little bit more substandard in terms of, you know, the production and all that kind of stuff, right? So focus on quality, not quantity, because you could actually get more engagement from one than you do from, you know, doing, doing multiple if you vibrate your channel and, and, and channel your energy as such. So that covers, I think, frequency. Uh, to attract brand and traffic awareness, I think it will be a mix of kind of, kind of both, right? Um, we have a product kind of called Spark Ads where you can actually drive kind of interest, you know, uh, into coming organically into, into your kind of organic business account. And you can also run kind of ads on top of that to, to drive the kind of traction as well. So it's always a good uh, idea to have a mix of both. In terms of how much you want to allocate across your objectives, right? I think it also depends on the stage of business that you're at. Now, a lot of advertisers will, will then tell us like, oh, I want to jump straight to conversions then. Forget about the brand or, you know, traffic or awareness. But then the question there, right, is if you jump straight to the bottom part of the funnel, what you might get is very high cost per acquisition because you haven't built that following. You haven't built your audience. And if you build your audience, just like what you saw with Acom, right, they leverage custom and Custom, custom audiences to target people who had engaged with their creatives before. And then that drove a lot of purchases, right? So that's what you want to do. You want to build that funnel and then only go into conversions after that. And that would be my advice. Um, for something like that, I would say, feel free to get in touch with us. We'll be happy to advise you. We also run, you know, our kind of educational webinars where we cover uh, more of that as well. Yeah. All right. Very, very nice. Um, I think we can take this last two from Karen as well. So Karen's wow. question. Oh, okay. Another one came in as well. <laughs> okay. Sure. Karen's on a roll here. Okay. So yeah. Karen's question is, what is the difference between TikTok business ad and how is it different from other social media? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think this would, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the words of our customers and what they're telling us, right? Like when we, when we ask them, you know, you've been running on this or that platform for the past two, three years, what's making you consider TikTok? I think first thing is the growth. You cannot avoid that while other platforms maybe might have bigger audiences, et cetera, right? The growth is right now with TikTok and we're not talking small growth, right? We're talking a platform that has now reached 1 billion monthly active users. This is like not a number to scoff at, right? So the growth is with us. Secondly, I think you get more mileage in a sense that, you know, if you have an effective creative more than other platforms, and we, we talk about this because of, let's just put yourself in the shoes of a user, right? If you're on any other platform right now, you tend to see a lot more ads for every organic post that you see. And this is what you call kind of like an ad load experience, right? Where it's a lot heavier on other platforms. And then what happens when, when users go through that? They get a lot more burnt out and disengaged from ads because it's ad after ad after ad. And also the way ads engage on other platforms tend to be a bit more, you know, spec driven, price driven. It has to be promotion driven, you know, et cetera. It's not so natural and authentic in the sense that they are using a bit of comedy. That said, you do see that, but maybe to a lesser extent. Whereas on TikTok, right, if you just went full price, it might work. But to get that long-term kind of, you know, uh, ROI on that ad, right, you have to incorporate that kind of authenticity and co even comedy angle sometimes, you know, on it as well. So I would say it's the mileage that you can get on uh, TikTok, you know, uh, for business as well. You know, that differentiates it from other kind of social media. And this is also an audience, right? Um, again, it's cultivating for the future. Similar to some, how some other platforms were, you know, maybe like uh, close to like a decade ago, you know, uh, they were kind of younger audiences, but what, what do these audiences grow into eventually? The big spenders, right? They're going to have their own families. They're going to progress in their careers. They're going to have more spending power as well. So you want to capture these audience. I talked about champion products earlier, but what some uh, merchants are also doing uh, is also kind of hooking customers in with entry level products, you know, start with our basic range. You know, and then as they get kind of influenced by this basic product, right, they then upsell themselves to like, oh, wow, I need a better spec product from the same, you know, merchant or, or, or seller. Uh, I need this and I need that because they justify it themselves, right? So cultivate that customer base as well on TikTok. You have a great chance to do that right now. Um, how TikTok business ads manage copyright posting? Yeah, so this is a good question. We do have sometimes uh, kind of advertisements and maybe these are usually more like resellers, right? Not really the brand principle themselves. 
uh, they see someone else using a creative, uh, uh, a really good creative, and they maybe on YouTube or whatever, or some other platform, they rip it off and they use it. And what happens is actually these ads get suspended, right? Usually, probably they get reported or whatever as well. Uh, we do suspend these ads as well. So my advice is, especially for video creatives, right? Do not copy it from, you know, obviously your competitors or anyone else. Uh, make sure you have permission to use it. Um, for the music, we have licensed music, right? So even more reason not to like kind of, you know, breach any copyright thing with the music. Use our licensed music library as well. Okay. And I think the last question is, do they provide A-B testing? We definitely, we definitely do. So it's always uh, recommended to do A-B testing. I would never recommend any business, right, to go in and just put all your eggs in one basket. Because again, you're trying to find out something that works for your business. And again, every business is unique. You might be selling the same thing as your competitor, but you differentiate from your competitor on maybe your pricing, the experience, the quality of the product, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you want to make that known and 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 there's a few ways that you want, might want to test to, to do that as well. So yeah, typically um, with a lot of the campaigns that we run, we always encourage A-B testing and it's definitely made possible easily on our TikTok ads manager. Hmm. All right. So Philip, thank you so much for answering all our questions. One last one before you go. What yeah. is your go-to binge on TikTok personally? My go-to binge, uh, I, I, yeah. I'm, my, my feed is just full of cat videos. Uh. I mean, <laughs> I, I think the cats on TikTok are a lot more sassy because they have to fit their attitude into very short form videos. So, so I really like, you know, how, how bad they are to their owners sometimes. Uh. It, it, it really gets me, you know, in a very funny way. Yeah. <laughs> Cats are the win. Pets are always a win on TikTok. Like, you know, like they're just so cute. And then you just can't get yeah. like, enough of them. You get stuck in just in an infinite scrolling. <laughs> exactly. And 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 it's exactly how the for you feed works, right? Like once you like a few yes. cat videos, you get all the others kind of flooding in. But then the for you feed still kind of like introduces like sometimes other animals, you know. Correct. Other Rabbits, animals. dogs, hamsters. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but nothing beats the sass of cats. Yeah. <laughs> all right philip this was absolutely fun i think you smashed it it was so fun listening to you you guys um to everyone who's still watching right now let's give him a virtual round of applause thank him so much philip thank you really like for showing us the ropes how to work around tiktok because it can be rather intimidating for especially people who are maybe in the older generation but thank you for making us feel comfortable you know um with this presentation and everything that TikTok has to offer. And a big shout out to your team as well, Melissa, Annabelle, Fiona. I see you girls. Thank you so much for answering all the questions on my behalf as well earlier. Philip, I'd like to wish you all the best in the you know, times to come. Hopefully, we'll be able to meet you in person one day soon. Please stay safe and feel free to stay on for our last session for today. Will do. Thank you very much, Laureen. And thank you, everyone. Have a good day and stay safe as well. Take care. All right. Thanks, Philip. Bye. Exobytes. Grow your business online.